Welcome to Betematis Academy. So in this video, I want to show you how to calculate the curved surface area of a frost room. Of course, I've explained what is a frost room in my previous video, where I showed you how to calculate the volume of a frost room. I encourage you to watch that video for those explanations. The link for that video is in the description box below. So in this very video, I want to show you how to calculate the core surface area of a frost room. If you complete this figure, then what we have gotten is a cone. So now that we have completed our frost room, I can call here A, call here B, call here C, call here D, and call here E. So how do we get the core surface area of this first room? So it is by getting the core surface area of the smaller cone, and then we'll subtract it from the core surface area of the bigger cone. The formula for core surface area is given as pi r l. We add r is the radius of the cone, while l represents the slanted height of the cone. In this very first room, we are given the diameter of the base, diameter of the top of the frost room and then the height of the frost room we were not given the slanted height of the frost room so we are going to determine the slanted height of the bigger cone and the slanted height of the smaller cone so the formula for curved surface area of a cone is given as curved surface area is equal to pi r l since what we were asked was the core surface area of this frost room then I'm going to rewrite the formula as curved surface area of frost room. This F here represents frost room for me. Will be equal to curved surface area of the bigger cone minus curved surface area of the smaller cone. Okay, so this is going to be equal to curved surface area of the bigger cone is pi big radius for the bigger cone for the base of the bigger cone times capital l that means the slanted height of the bigger cone minus core surface area of the smaller cone will be pi small radius that means the small radius of the smaller cone times small l that is small slanted height of the smaller cone okay so the next thing to do is to write out the parameters and their values of course, pi is always 22 over 7 or 3.142, except stated otherwise. Since what they gave us is the diameter of the bigger cone, the radius is going to be 20 over 2. That means diameter divided by 2. This will give us 10 centimeter. Why the radius of the smaller cone, since what they gave us is diameter, we are also going to do 10 divided by 2. And this will give us 5 centimeter. To determine the slanted height of the bigger cone and the slanted height of the smaller cone, we are going to form a right angle triangle from this our cone. So let's draw the height. So this is angle 90 degree. This is angle 90 degree. So let's let's call here X. Let's call here Y. I want to pull out this triangle and consider it separately. That is triangle A. Y, E. Okay. So, redrawing that triangle, it was looking like this. So, here is our A. Here is our Y. Here is our E. Then, here. Here is our X. Here is our C. If line D, E is the diameter of a circle, then line Y, E becomes the radius of the circle. So, if line D, E was 20, then y e, which is our bigger radius, will be 10 centimeters. Also, line B, C, which is the diameter of the smaller circle, the top of the first room, now the radius X, C, 5 centimeters. Remember, the height of this first room is setting us from Y to X, and it is 12 centimeters. So here is 12 centimeters. So line A X is the height of the smaller cone. That means line A X is the height of the smaller cone. So since it is not given, let's call it H. So that now means it means that A Y is the height of the bigger cone, but A X is the height of the smaller cone. But X Y is twelve. It is given. 
but as which is the height of the smaller cone h is not given so we are going to proceed by method of similar figure we are going to compare side with side and height with height in order to get the missing value so we can now say so we can say smaller height which is as that is h over the bigger height over the bigger height which is a y that is 12 plus h is equal to then since the radius is given since the bigger radius and the smaller radius is given i'm going to compare the height with the radius so this so i, I started with smaller height then i will go with smaller radius first which is 5 divided by bigger radius which is 10. so the next thing to do is to cross multiply so this becomes 10 times h 10 h is equal to 5 times all of this is 5 bracket 12 plus h so this is 10 h is equal to 5 times 12 let's expand this bracket 5 times 12 is 60 plus 5 times h is 5 h so the next thing to do is to collect like terms so it becomes 10 h this is plus 5 h it goes across equal sign it becomes minus 5 h and this is equal to 16. so 10 minus 5 10 h minus 5 h will give us 5 h equal to 60. dividing both sides by 5 because i want h to stand alone h is equal to 60 divided by 5 and my h is equal to 60 divided by 5 will give us 12 centimeter so but but the bigger height of our cone will be 12 plus h because from here to here is h as we have stated why from here to here is 12 as it has been given so therefore the bigger height of the cone will be 12 plus h so i can say but bigger h is equal to 12 plus smaller h so this will be equal to 12 plus 12 so this will give us 24 centimeter so now that we have gotten the bigger height of this cone so now that we have gotten the bigger height of the bigger cone and the smaller height of the smaller cone we cannot proceed to use pythagoras rule to find this hypotenuse the slanted height of the cone which is something like this slanted height so by method of pythagoras rule we will be able to find hypotenuse of our slanted height so permit me to redraw i want to redraw this now as this is now i want you to see the numbers clearly how it plays out so this is our small h which is 12. this is our height of the first room which is what 12. so this is the smaller radius of the smaller cone which is 5. and this is the bigger radius of the bigger cone which is 10. here is a x c y e so the smaller hypotenuse ac is our small l is our small slanted height of the cone why the bigger hypotenuse ae will be our capital l that means the bigger slanted height of the bigger cone to get the smaller l let's now consider triangle a x c so consider triangle a x c triangle a x c so using pythagoras rule which states that hypotenuse square is equals to opposite square plus adjacent square. Hypotenuse remains the line that is facing angle 90 degree. Here can be your opposite, here can be your adjacent. So hypotenuse, of course, is the AC, which is our small L square is equal to 5 square plus our adjacent 12 square. So that L square is equal to 5 square means 5 times 5, 25.
plus 12 square means 12 times 12, 144. Four. So this will give us L square is equals to 169. So L is equals to the square root of 169. So L is equal to 13 centimeter. By similar method, we're going to consider the bigger triangle in order, in order to get line AE, which is our bigger L. So considering triangle AYE, AYE. So using the same Pythagoras rule, hypotenuse square is equal to opposite square plus adjacent square. It becomes bigger L square is equal to opposite, let's use 10 as our opposite, plus adjacent, but this is line AE, 12, 12. So 12 plus 12 is 24. So this is L square is equal to, this is 10 square plus 24 square. So that L square is equal to, so we give us 6, 7, 6. And L is now equal to the square root of 6, 7, 6. So this will give us 26 centimeter. So it means our smaller slanted length is 13 centimeter, while our bigger slanted length is 26 centimeter. We can now fit it in into this formula accordingly and finish up the solving. All right, so our small length, our small slanted length is equal to 13 centimeter, while our bigger slanted length is equal to 26 centimeter. So fitting into the formula, curved surface area of the first room is now equal to, this is 22 over 7 times our bigger radius. Our bigger radius is what? 10 times our bigger length, our bigger slanted length. So our bigger slanted length is what? 26 minus, I'm following the formula, 22 over 7 times small radius, our small radius is 5 times small slanted length, our small slanted length is 13. So if you use calculator and punch out this, you are going to get 817.14 minus 204.29. So finishing up, subtracting what you have, 612.85 centimeter square. So that becomes our final answer. Calculating the core surface area of a frost room is something that is quite easy to do, but it requires a bit of carefulness and organized step-by-step -step work so that you don't make mistakes. So thank you so much for watching. If you have not subscribed to this channel, do wait to hit the subscription button. See you in my next video.